Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. On behalf of Happy United, I want to thank you for joining today's Happy Hangout. Uh, my name is Kate Moraz. I'm the Senior Program, du Program Director at Hepatitis B Foundation and uh, Director of Happy United. So we're really excited to present you today, today's Hangout called The Asian American Hepatitis B Story, um, What We Know and What We Can Do. Um, the Hepatitis B Foundation, um, just to give you a little bit of a background, uh, we're a national coalition um, to address the public health challenge of hepatitis B, which is the leading cause of liver cancer and a major health disparity among Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, the focus of today's webinar, actually. Our goals are to, are to raise the profile of hepatitis B as an urgent public health issue, um, increase hep B testing and vaccination. Uh, we have over 30 coalition members working on this around the country. Um, and improve access to care and treatment for individuals who are living with hepatitis B to prevent um, end stage liver disease and cancer. So uh, just to get um, started on a few house housekeeping items, um, there is a phone and audio option and your PIN number will be shown after joining the webinar. Um, and Please note that you are in a listen-only mode uh, to minimize uh, the noise for a large um, audience like today. So um, you are muted during the presentations. Um, feel free to submit questions in writing during any um, part of the presentations today by typing them in the question or chat box um, on your GoToWebinar control panel you see here. So we'll be reviewing them as they come in and we'll actually do Q&A um, after each presentation today and at the end of today's presentation. Um, and finally, today's Hangout is being recorded. Um, so you'll receive an email with a review of recording um, after the webinar today, as well as um, copies of the presentation materials will be uh, made available to you on our website. Um, I'll do brief intros before each uh, presentation, but just wanted to uh, go over our, our panelists today is uh, Dr. Sun Chuan from Philadelphia, uh, Dr. Moon Chen, and Ms. Julie Dang from uh, Sacramento and Ancart. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, tell you a little bit about Dr. Zhuan. Um, Dr. Hsun Zhuan is uh, a professor of the Division of Population Science uh, at the Department of Medical Oncology. Um, she has conducted cancer con control research in minority populations for over 15 years. Dr. Juan is a social and behavioral health um, scientist. Her areas of expertise include the social determinants of cancer screening, um, for cancer screening behaviors for breast, cervical, and liver cancer, health disparities, liver cancer prevention and control among high risk groups, um, including Asian Americans. Um, currently, Dr. Joan is leading an NCI-funded uh, study to develop, implement, and evaluate lay health workers' intervention to reduce liver cancer disparities in Asian Americans. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Joan. So, okay. Before I move on, I just briefly go over what's going on this uh, uh, HCC from the global perspective. So this uh, liver cancer is one of the kind of liver cancer. HCC is really ranked fourth in cancer incidence and third in cancer mortality. More than 80% of liver cancer occurs in the developing world, and uh, this liver cancer is largely preventable. 80% caused by chronic hepatitis B virus infection. Can you go over the next slide? Next. So here, uh, for the happy infection, 2 billion people worldwide infected, more than 4, 400 million carriers in worldwide, and 1.4 million people chronically infected in the USA, 46,000 American were duly infected with this hepatitis B in USA, Usually, it used to be one out of 10 Asian Americans has a, a chronic happy infection. However, in the past five or 10 years, we work hard and then people usually tell us one out of 12 Asian Americans has chronic hep hepatitis B. Next. So there is a health disparity of this happy infection. You will see here, this is the 2002 data. Uh, uh, for the prevalence of uh, hepatitis B surface antigen prevalence, everybody, white, Hispanic, African-American, and others, their prevalence is less than 
However, you look at the Asian Pacific Islander foreign bond, 8.9% and U.S. bond, 1.4%. So we will see a lot of health disparity of this uh, happy infection for Asian Americans. Next slide. So for this, for this is Asian Americans, liver cancer is the second in mortality and fourth in incidence among all cancers for Asian Americans, especially for men. We have really higher liver cancer incidence, Vietnamese 41.8, Korean 24.8, Chinese 20.9, and compared to white 3.7 um, incident rate. Next slide. So uh, I already mentioned that 80% uh, of liver cancer caused by this chronic happy infection and Asian Americans are 20 to 30 times more likely to have a healthy infection compared to other ethnic groups. If you do some kind of healthy screening and the vaccination, this is very important to reduce liver cancer incidence for this Asian Americans. Next. So uh, we, we did some kind of literature review and then we found what are the really important factors associated with the low screening and the vaccination for these high risk Asian Americans. Uh, they have really low awareness of happy infection. They have limited English tolerance and low health literacy. And they have limited access to care. And they also have some kind of cultural barriers and uh, Many, many Asian Americans, they really doesn't have much focusing on prevention. So based on this, we need to develop some kind of culturally, linguistically tailored education program to increase hepatitis B knowledge and communication. That's how I started to develop a photo novel. This is part of the non-traditional educational material. Uh, next slide. So uh, based on that, we did a content analysis, what, what, what are out there uh, for the happy you know, educational material. So there are some kind of material available from the National Cancer Institute. There is some English material available and Stanford Asian Liver Center. Uh, they have English, you know, one page double side uh, traditional material available. They also have Korean, Vietnamese, and Chinese, and they have another language translated uh, for this uh, uh, educational material. And then some pharmaceutical company uh, such as Bristol Myers Cave and then Gilead, they have some materials. Uh, and Hepatitis Foundation International, they also has English and Asian uh, language materials. Uh, hepatitis B initiative dish, they have materials. So when we brought this one to the community, especially for Asian American liver cancer, you know, one page double side materials, uh, some some elderly and they kind of asking me, this is too much information in one page. The letter is too small. Could you give me some kind of really big letters? So that's how I'm thinking about. Let's develop some kind of educational material. Sometimes they say, I pick these materials, however, I pick it up and then I, I cannot read it and then I just put this one in somewhere. Sometimes I just put it in the trash can. So that's kind of really important thing, you know, we learn from the community. So we kind of thinking about, let's try some kind of different approach. Here. Okay, so uh, next slide. So, okay, this is the one kind of uh, educational material from uh, Asian, Stanford Asian Cancer River Center. This is one page and then it has a double side. So uh, this is kind of for example. Can you go to the next? Next. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so we developed some kind of photo novel. What is a photo novel? Photo novel format is kind of similar to comic book, but instead of you know, you know, comic, we just using some kind of photos, photos and dialogue of a target population. And then storyline is really kind of a common experience in our community. And then this is tailored to culture, race and gender and language and class, you know, status. But some of the Right side, there is an example. Uh, 
you know, CDC, they develop some kind of horror to increase prostate cancer, and some people kind of develop some uh, horror for to increase uh, breast cancer screening in Hispanic populations. So these are the examples. Let's go to the next slide. So what is the theory? This is kind of theory is based on, you know, participatory based action research uh, by Freire's. So Deborah Rotter, she's at Hopkins. She's the one of the who develop non-traditional educational materials such as uh, this kind of photo novel. And she says the most successful educational experience are those that involve and engage the learner using Freire's, you know, problem solving educational methods. So this is kind of a theory behind for the photo novel. Next slide. So there are three components of a photo novel. You should have a plot and kind of sub opera style stories, you know, plot. Should have, should have some happy ending and we have a dialogue and we have a visual component. So let's go over each component. Next slide. So photo novel, we have a dialogue and photos. Uh, this is non-traditional educational material, you know, format, comic book, but you can substitute it with the photos with the real people. And then dialogue, dialogue is placed in some kind of world bubble. And then this dialogue is kind of dramatic, start with the dramatic storyline, somebody died of liver cancer. And then, however, at the end, for the 16 pages, at the end, you will see some kind of happy ending story. So this is generated by, the, by participants, and that the theme comes from everyday experience. Uh, next. So plot is really narrative event uh, or with emphasis on some kind of cause and effect. It should be easily understood. We usually keep the test to minimum five, uh, and you clarify scene changes. Sometimes it changes, you know, Korean churches, you know, to some kind of Korean groceries, you know, thing like that. And then uh, it should not be long. So we kind of limited the page number less than 16 pages, and then we really work hard to try to sell ideas. Can you next slide? So dialogue, it should be open discussion between the characters, so, you know, for example, my husband and wife, and then you should be really creative, use less word, and then using familiar words and expression, and then express ideas with narrative interest, and then we shorten the stories and we really clarify the message. And next, so visual content. So cover, cover is very important. You know, people kind of see the coverage and then they really motivate to pick up the photo number in the first place. And then we also include the uh, for photograph and we have some kind of drawings there. Okay, next. So, okay. So after the content analysis, we were thinking about, you know, let's develop some photo, photo novel. So originally I was thinking, okay, let's develop one photo novel, you know, for Korean, Vietnamese, Chinese, and develop one photo novel and in English, and then we translate it into Korean, Chinese, and Vietnamese. However, after the focus group, we have uh, three Chinese focus group, two Korean focus, and two Vietnamese for English. We have a young uh, combination of Chinese and Korean and Vietnamese. So we, we conduct eight focus group. Based on this focus group, we decide to go to develop three different photo novels because even if they are the you know, subgroup of Asian Americans, they have different cultures. So this is the one we developed this one. After we developed this one, we did some kind of pilot testing, whether they really like the you know, content, whether they really understand their kind of things. So I will go over this one later. After that, we did some kind of process evaluation. Next slide. Okay, so these are the findings from the focus group. For the Chinese, stigma is really, really important for the Chinese population. So uh, having a fo uh, template on happy, you know, they think that they, you know, somebody got pick up the, those pamphlets, maybe he or she may have some kind of hepatitis big, you know, careers. So we need to be careful for these Chinese people. 
they still have a really low awareness of hepatitis B prevention and risk factors. But Korean group, they really heavily rely on, you know, oriental medicine, herbal medicine, or other supplements. And they have kind of faith and personal stress was thought to be related to have liver cancer. And same thing, they have low awareness about liver cancer prevention. Vietnamese, they still uh, they have a stigma associated with this happy. Once they talk about happy, this is kind of unlucky. And then younger people have better access to uh, medica medical information. However, they still have a little limited uh, knowledge about the uh, hepatitis B you know, awareness and liver cancer prevention. So based on this focus group, we will go with the three, uh, three different foreign novels. So for the two developed foreign novels, we should have a storyline. And then we have actors and actresses. And then you know, we have doctors. And then we took the picture uh, by our research team. And then we recruited the people for actors and actresses in the community. You know, the setting is a kind of familiar place for the Vietnamese. We start, we, we took this one in nail salon and churches or doctor's office. And then I will go over, you know, one example of Vietnamese photo novel. There is just some storylines. However, we insert some kind of epidemiological statistics and some facts such as uh, what are the symptoms, uh, what are the transmission modes, who are the high risk group, you know, what are, how you do the hepatitis B screening. So we, we insert some fact box along the storyline. Next. So, uh, these are the storylines for Chinese, you know, young Chinese couple about to get married and the uh, uh, groom, bride, she got infection, so they kind of go over, you know, to to, to the doctor and do the, uh, do the some kind of, went to the doctor and they did, the, you know, screening and then happy ending story. And next one, Korean. Uh, Korean is kind of, you know, typical Korean immigrant to live in the USA, and they really focusing on Oriental medicine. And then father kind of learned uh, his brother got, you know, liver cancer uh, caused by chronic happy, and son in, you know, urged parent to go to screening, and father got infected, and uh, they kind of talked to the doctor, and finally he kind of followed up to the kind of treatment information. So that's the kind of story for the Korean. And then Vietnamese, next. Next slide for the Vietnamese. Okay, uh, I will go over this uh, Vietnamese photo novel. So young immigrant couple on their salon business in the USA and wife who see the TV and one of the you know uh, famous actor died of liver cancer. So wife was thinking about uh, to talk to uh, talk to her husband. And her husband used to live with a roommate who is infected with hepatitis B virus infection. After you know, uh, wife talked to husband and they went to the doctor and they kind of did the screening and then they found the husband is infected and then. Doctor provides some kind of treatment and vaccination information. So we we have kind of different storylines and different actors and actresses for this uh, each photo novel. Can you uh, move over next slide? Okay. After we develop a photo novel, we did some kind of pilot testing, uh, asking community people as well as our community advisory board member. So we asking, do you like the storyline? Do you like actors and actresses really familiar to the community? And do you understand? And then do you like the size, format, color? They, you, you like that? And then uh, we put some kind of fact box, whether they understand that fact box. So next slide. We have three photo novels. Uh, Chinese, Korean, and then Vietnamese. Actually, Vietnamese really uh, got some uh, best printed material award at AJP, American Public Health Association meeting in uh, 2011. 
So I will kind of briefly go over what if it looks like for the Vietnamese photo novel. And the other thing is, uh, here is our website. If you go to our website, you can click uh, Chinese photo novel and Korean photo novel, and then you can also see the Vietnamese photo novel. If you have interested in uh, having this, uh, receiving this photo novel, you know, you can send me email, and then uh, I can send it to you, you know, free ten copy for free. But if you ask me more than you know ten copies, uh, you know, I can ask some something, but it, it is free. So this is our website. Can you click for if you there is Chinese and Korean and Vietnamese? If you, if you click Vietnamese, this is the Vietnamese foreign novel. So these are the two parts. First, this is 36 pages. So if uh, first part, this is Vietnamese. However, later part, starting page 19, uh, this is kind of English. So I will go over uh, some English foreign novel you know, briefly. 19. Go to the page 19. Okay. Okay, this is the one. So here, this is the one at the cover pages. So we, uh, Asian American, really focusing on the family. So we put the you know covers with the family, uh, mother and father and the little boy. So f and this is the kind of. First page, we kind of put some kind of seven important things you should know about the hepatitis B. And next page, move. Yeah, this is the story about the happy family of Rong and Hoa. So here is the story start in nail salon. The lady she was watching, and then famous actor passed away of liver cancer, and it was kind of related to chronic hepatitis B infection. So could you move? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of talked to her aunt, and then aunt says, you know, uh, you need to have some kind of screening. And she next page, she kind of talked to her husband. Husband never have hepatitis B screening, and then uh, but he doesn't want to do that. You know, I'm so good. You know, uh, so. I'm eating well, and then don't worry about you know me. And then, however, you know she kind of convinced him, uh, convince him to do you know screening here. We have a fact box here. Hepatitis B is not transmitted by this one. Sharing food or share eating, sharing eating utensil, touch, hugging, kissing. So we put some kind of fact box along the storyline. So people read the storyline and then they will see, they learn. Okay, hepatitis is not transmitted by this one. So we insert some fact box. Could you move over? Yep. And then, uh, and her husband does want to do that, but she kind of keeps saying, keep in, insisting because her husband used to live with his roommate who had hepatitis B virus infection. So kind of, she kind of convinced him. And then next to fact box is uh, kind of another transmission mode, you know, blood, you know, body fluid and semen. So these are the ones for the, uh, how hepatitis B is transmitted. And can you move? And then finally, uh, she uh, convinced him to go to the screening. Uh, move, move, can you move? Yep. So he, this is the one, you know, chronic, another fact, hepatitis B is kind of chronic, I mean, silent killer, no symptoms. So we kind of put these kind of things there. And some symptoms for the acute hepatitis B, we put the, some fact box there. Okay, move forward. And then he agreed to go to the hepatitis B screening finally. So they went to the doctor. So here, okay, this is the one, uh, some kind of high risk group. So we insert some fact box there. And then he went to the doctor. Maybe somebody, somebody knows uh, Mark Lee. He's a really famous doctor in Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area, who is working hard for this hepatitis B virus infection. So Mark Lee, he's the doctor for three, four on hour. So they went to the uh, doctor, and then 
uh, they did a screening who's move yep so and then finally they get they got the uh, result husband is infected and the uh, wife she is unprotected so we put uh, some kind of uh, what you do after the hepatitis to be screening how how you gonna divide it up? So infected, you know, protected or unprotected. If you unprotected, you should have a vaccination. Just we put this kind of chart there. And next, so and then uh, a week later, they see the doctor, and doctor says, you know, your husband infected, and the wife is not infected. However, she needs to get the three times a series of vaccination to be protected. So uh, we already started, you know, dramatic, you know, ways uh, and but always a happy ending stories. So they live really happy April and then this is kind of Q&A. Uh, so people have some kind of myths, so we kind of clarify Q&A and that's it. So it takes less than five minutes, you know, to go over this, you know, brochure. Uh, somebody read this photo novel and they said, oh my God, this is my story. I always keep postponing to have a screening. So once they read this, you know, photo novel, they went to the screening. So that's the kind of thing. So after develop this one, we did some kind of intervention. So can we go next slide? Okay. So. How we use this kind of photo number in the intervention? Uh, we this is a kind of randomized control trial. We have an inter intervention group and control group. Intervention group had the PowerPoint presentation in the community, and then uh, they they took the we gave them the photo number and then asked them to read at home. A month later, uh, we call we we send them send the mail kind of return the mail uh, whether we kind of whether they re read the photo novel and uh, we did some kind of process evaluation. So I briefly go over the what are the process evaluation of this photo novel. Okay, next slide. So we ask, you know, do you understand, do you like the content and uh, visual appeal is, uh, how is it and then is it really culturally relevant? And after you read this one, did you change your behavior? Uh, did you feel some kind of self efficacy and have you after reading this one, do you have an intention to get tested hepatitis B virus, you know, screening? So this is the one we ask in their process evaluation. Can you, next slide. Okay, so uh, 441 intervention group we sent to uh, mail, and then uh, 300, uh, 370 they respond out of 370. 347 they read for a novel. So we ask uh, information is helpful about 87. They said that this is very uh, helpful, agree and strongly agree. This is a really good teaching tool about 87%. And then somebody said the story written by somebody knows the community uh, about 77% uh, 70, they agree and strongly agree. And then about 50% they says they have intention to have a uh, intention to have a screen within five months after reading this photo novel, and then uh, they really confident to get screen after reading a photo novel about uh, seventy percent. So kind of about more than two thirds, three thirds, they really like our photo novel. So let me kind of do the summarize for this one. So our photo novel successfully reached out of our target population. 87 response and then among the responded, 97% read the photo novel and majority of participants, they really strongly agreed and agreed. The cancer information in photo novel was helpful. This is a really good teaching tool. Story was written by someone who knows the community and then about 50% they really want to have intention to have a screening within five months. And next slide. So these are the conclusion. Overall evaluation for number is really good and with a good understandability as well as a cultural relevance to our target population. So 
vulnerable may be really good communication and education on tool for Asian Americans. So we caught this one. One of our friends did a happy testing after reading for a novel. So I think this is helpful. This is from the focus group. And then the brochure gave me a good information about hepatitis B testing and risk. The story is realistic. So we think this is really a good feedback from the community. OK, next. So if you have been interested in you know, our focus group findings, there is a publication by Kevin. And if you have been interested in some kind of process evaluation, more detail, Lee and we kind of uh, did some kind of publication in health education and behavior. OK. So we got some funds of uh, R25. And then this is a collaboration with uh, Hopkins and the University of Maryland School of Public Health. OK. So sure. question for two or three minutes. OK. Thanks so much, Dr. Joan. That was um, really, really interesting um, just to see the different the settings and um, you know, as a result of the focus groups. Um, so I think we have time for one question. And then um, feel free to send in your questions um, to the chat box. Um, if we don't get to it right now, we'll get to it at the end. So I'll, I'll go ahead and take the first question, Dr. Joan. Um, the question is, in your experience, are photo novels better to use in different age groups? For example, do younger people respond to them better or vice versa? Uh, I think this is better for the older age group. And then this is better for the kind of low educated group. For the, we, for the Vietnamese group, we have less educated compared to Chinese and Korean. So we have a better evaluation, better effect on uh, Vietnamese photo novels. So this is kind of uh, more kind of effective in older age group as well as low educated group. Interesting. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's, it's interesting to see so many nuances, even within the um, one ethnic group. So that's actually a good transition to our next presentation. Um, I think Dr. Moon, Chan, and Julie will go over some of um, the uh, overview of the um, Asian American community. So before we begin, I just wanted to talk, uh, tell you a little bit about Dr. Chen. Um, Dr. Chen serves as the principal investigator for the Asian American Network for Cancer Awareness Research and Training, or ANCART, uh, since his initial founding in April of 2000, where he was a professor at Ohio State University. In 2002, he joined the faculty in the Department of Public Health Sciences School of Medicine at UC Davis uh, and became the co-leader of the Cancer Etiology Prevention and Control Program at the UC Davis Cancer Center. Uh, he brought NCART with him on his move um, and transferred the national headquarters to UC Davis Cancer Center. Um, and with him today is Julie Dang. Um, she's the Director of Community Engagement and Outreach for the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center. Julie has developed, implemented, and evaluated strategies uh, to increase Asian American communities' participation in cancer research, education, outreach, and screenings through conducting um, community needs assessments, developing culturally appropriate and ethnically specific educational materials and, and engaging in community-based uh, participatory research. So, so glad to have you both here today and um, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great, <laughs> great. Thank you very much, um, uh, Kate and Dr. Yuan. So uh, the presentation that we're gonna be making is based upon a review article uh, that is in review by the World Journal of, Ep uh, of Gastroenterology. We wanna talk about hepatitis B among Asian Americans prevalence, progress, and prospects for control. I'm delighted to have Julie Dang with me. And what we'll do is kind of like a TV talk show. Um, you know, she's going to be a correspondent in the field, and I'm going to be uh, also talking about this. Um, next slide, please. Um, we are from um, ANCART. And uh, you'll see on the map that uh, our headquarters is here in Sacramento. But ANCART is the National Cancer Institute National Center for Reducing Asian American Cancer Health Disparities. And uh, we have colleagues in consortium with um, Seattle, uh, LA, and Hawaii. And together, uh, this area represents about one third of, of all Asian Americans in the country. We're, uh, we're uh, acknowledging NCI funding for this, but uh, what we're gonna talk about is not uh, what, um, necessarily what they endorse. Next slide, please. 
there are three objectives uh, for our presentation. Uh, we want to review the, the magnitude of the hepatitis B uh, burden among Asian Americans. We want to highlight the process being used to reduce the burden and thirdly provide uh, evidence-based strategies. Next, please. And so, um, Julie. So to talk a little bit about the hepatitis B grants that we've received over the years. Um, so since 2002, ANCAR has been funded to do hepatitis B work. Um, so during ANCAR, what we did was we disseminated a lot of cultural appropriate and ethics materials on Hep B. Um, so we did a lot of education, outreach, and training. And then in 2006, we were funded for a PO1 called um, Liver Cancer Control Interventions for Asian Americans. So this was a randomized control trial featuring lay health workers um, to educate community members um, on hepatitis B. Um, so I'm going to show you guys our flip chart that we need. So the lay health workers uh, went out and educated community members on hep B by using the flip chart. So the flip chart has like, like one side, it's, this is the long flip chart. So we did it in long Korean Vietnamese. So like one side would be like a picture of like hep B and the virus, and then the other side would be what the lay health worker would see. Um, so the lay health worker would educate the community member by pointing out the photos, and then they would have um, some summary points that they could talk about. Um, so this isn't in English, but we um, had it in Korean Vietnamese as well. Um, and then the next study that we had is called the Thousand Asian American Study. So we were funded by the CDC in 2012 to screen a thousand foreign-born Asian Americans for Hep B or children of the Asian Americans from endemic regions. Um, so we were able to screen 1,004 Asian Americans during that one year period. And uh, not only did we screen them, we provided vaccinations for those who um, needed vaccinations and couldn't afford to go through the own insurance plan. So we held three vaccination clinics with the UC Davis um, Cancer Center to, screen, to vaccinate those individuals. And then most recently, um, last year, we received a grant called Sacramento Collaborative to Advance Testing and Care for Hepatitis B. Um, so this is also a CDC-funded um, grant. And what we did here is um, we're screening 2,000 more Asian Americans. So we are calling it our 3,000 Asian American study. Um, and so far, we've been on track to screen our first 1,000 um, this year. And next year, we'll screen another 1,000. So besides screening them, um, the next part of the grant is trying to provide linkage to care. So all those individuals that we screened, um, if they are negative, we're trying to get them um, set up with vaccinations if they need vaccines. And if they're positive, we're trying to get them um, into counseling and then also to see our hepatologist and to provide um, feedback to them and follow up um, for their whole HEPI um, treatment. Next slide. Oh, okay. And what you see uh, in this world map is the uh, areas in the world, the dark red, with, uh, where there's lots and lots of um, hepatitis B, and CDC considers these the highly endemic areas where there are between 2 to 8 percent of uh, people prevalent with uh, hepatitis B. As you can tell, uh, Asian Americans, uh, people from Asia, are heavily in the high risk group. In the next slide, um, I want to make the point that uh, since we know that tobacco uh, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Uh, the statistics show that the second most important risk factor is really chronic hepatitis B. So, uh, so if you're not smoking, and um, you know, the, for Asian Americans, the, the second most important risk factor is hepatitis B. So, this is an extremely important uh, area that we need to address. And in the next slide. Uh, you'll see that uh, that uh, um, this is something that uh, Dr. John already presented: is that Asian Americans are disproportionately uh, affected by Asian uh, by hepatitis B. The ratio that uh, Dr. John uh, presented was it's actually 110 to one, and I don't know of any other disparity that is 110 to one. In the next slide, uh, Julie's going to talk about who we're talking about in terms of Asian Americans. Um, so we're talking about the Asian American population. So the map, this map encompasses everyone who's considered Asian American. Um, but we can move on to the next slide. Um, so we're talking about aggregate data and how the data being aggregated masses the disparities. So Asian Americans are the only group in the United States that have a bimodal distribution for major demographic risk factors related to health outcomes. So I'm going to talk a little bit about like the education, income, insurance, and um, the age. Next slide, please. So. 
Okay. Um, so this shows the educational attainment for selected Asian groups uh, using the census data. So as you can tell, it's uh, very um, by modal, whereas we have Laotians who 31% have less than a high school diploma, and you have Filipinos who only 7.5% have less than a high school diploma. So when you look at bachelor degree or higher, you see Laotians that are, have 12.3%, and where um, Asian Indians have the highest at 72%. And if you look at all Asians, um, it's 14.3% for less than a high school diploma, and it's um, at least 50% have a bachelor degree or higher. So there's a lot of variations between the different Asian groups. So when you lump them all together, they look a lot better um, than they do individually. Next slide. Um, so this is the difference in median household income for certain groups as well. So the median income is 71,000. Um, so you can see that Hmong Americans um, make um, 23,000 less than the median mean income, and then South Indians, um, Asian Indians make 26,000 more. So if you look at the statistics, it makes it look like um, most Asian Americans are more well off than they are. But but then if you count the Southeast Asians who um, are more uh, likely to be low income, then it really skews the data. Next slide, please. And the last one I have is uh, SNAP um, benefits. So for food stamps for selected Asian groups, Japanese have a less than 5% of being on food stamps. Uh, and for Hmong, that's the, it's almost at 35%. So there is a very big distribution between who is on food stamps and who uh, is in the poverty level and um, in the education attainment. Next slide. And then this slide, um, this just shows the fact that, um, that those who are foreign born are much more likely to be infected with hepatitis B. And, and, and so our focus is, um, as you can tell, um, on foreign-born um, and Hmong uh, in particular who are um, disproportionately affected. In the next slide, you'll see uh, that, um, uh, that, that this shows the distribution of the foreign-born and how the foreign-born are at much greater risk than the U.S.-born. In the next slide, uh, Julie will present to you what our strategy has been. Um, so we have a two-prong approach to uh, reaching out to the Asian American community. So for our community part, we call it outpatient reach. Um, so these are um, not patients in the healthcare system. Um, so what we've done is we've done a lot of culturally appropriate and um, detailed like um, different interventions for different groups. Um, so we can use the lay health worker interventions for the Hmong, Korean, Vietnamese groups. Um, and we use a lot of community-based organizations um, to help us with our screening events. So all of our screening events are held at different um, like CBOs around um, Sacramento County. Um, and then UC Davis has a has about five five student-run uh, medical clinics here. So each of the student-run medical clinics focus on a different um, target population. So we work with the API um, student-run clinics to host screening events at their clinics as well. Um, so between our lay health work interventions, our community-based organizations, and the student-run clinics, that's how we were able to screen almost 1,500 Asian Americans in the last couple, two years for um, hepatitis B. And our inpatient is something that we just started um, last year. So what we're trying to do is um, reach out to the patients that are in our health system. So we do electronic uh, medical record reminders. So um, what happens is we'll go into the records and we'll find out who, ha who have not been tested for Hep B yet, and we'll send them prompts to their physicians that during their next appointment that they should be screened for Hep B. Um, and then we're also doing testing out this new telephone banking si system where um, um, a tele automatic reminder would be a patient would get the automatic reminder that they need to be tested, and then um, but they can call into the line, and then somebody will put the order in for them to get tested. Um, so what we're trying to do is reach everybody, anybody that could be affected by Hep B. And in our next slide, which is a summary slide, what we tried to do um, in in summary is really to say that that Asian Americans are uh, disproportionately affected by um, by liver cancer, um, that, uh, that if we want to really reduce the burden, we really need to screen everyone who's born in that, uh, that red area, um, the people who are uh, in, uh, in an in Olympic area greater than 2%. Um, those after screening, if they are negative, then our recommendation is to vaccinate, and then, um, and then if they're infected, to get treated. Um, and then finally, um, uh, you know, uh, 
one of the nice things about it is the fact that uh, this is a um, unnecessary cancer burden. Let me just summarize what I believe to be the cancer burden affecting Asian Americans. The, the cancer burden is, for us, unique. We are the first U.S. racial ethnic group to experience cancer as the leading cause of death. Everybody else, the leading cause of death um, with, um, has been heart, heart disease. Number two, our cancer burden is unusual. It's unusual in the sense that the cancers that affect us disproportionately are those due to infectious reasons, such as hepatitis B virus. But number three, our cancer burden is unnecessary because we have the means uh, through early detection and the work that the task force is doing, the work that Hep B United is doing to make sure that all people at risk are uh, have their status determined and then uh, properly taken care of it. And so in the last slide, um, you know, the challenge is that um, we are on a journey and uh, if we want to, you know, have the ability to eliminate um, uh, uh, liver cancer disparities, I think we, we've got uh, perhaps the next best chance because from a historical point of view, the only disease that has ever been eliminated from the face of the globe is smallpox. And if you look at smallpox and think about smallpox, there are many parallels to hepatitis B and liver cancer. The fact that it's virally transmitted, the fact that the only reservoir is in people, the fact that, uh, that um, we can treat um, uh, hepatitis B infections just like we can treat uh, smallpox, and then finally, because there's a vaccination for those who've never been affected. So uh, with that, uh, we, um, we want to thank you for your attendance and uh, attention to us. Great, thanks so much, Moon and um, Julie. We'll keep the slide up. Motivation. Um, so uh, we do have a few questions to get to, and um, just a reminder to the audience: um, uh, since this is a, a you're muted um, because of the size of the audience, please send in your uh, question via the chat box, um, and I will direct them to the presenter. Um, so just another question that came in for Dr. Juan. Um, let me find it real quick. Um, has there been any complications in implementing the photo novels? Um, any barriers, in the, I guess, in the implementation? And what should we keep in mind if we try to implement, to use the photo novels in our HPV um, efforts, HPV um, prevention and educational efforts, I think, is what they're trying to say. So once, once we got, uh, have this one and then we did uh, some the effective of this photo novel, we did the process evaluation and then we did some uh, intervention. Intervention include, you know, photo novel also. So after that, we are ready to disseminate this uh, photo novel to everywhere. So. Hepatitis B, HBIDC, Jane Penn, organized by Jane mm -hmm. Penn. When she goes to the free screening event in Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area, she took to this photo novel and then she display in the table and then whoever has interested in, they took this photo novel. So that's the one way we kind of disseminating this uh, uh, materials to the communities. So we're really working hard to disseminate this one. So this webinar is one of the kind of good good ways, you know, people kind of look at the, our website, visit our website, and then they might kind of send me email and then I can send them. So uh, my bottom line is uh, I kind of implementing, you know, disseminating these materials as much I can do. So we don't, Great. so, Mm -hmm. And some kind of researcher, uh, from one one researcher from Australia, I think Australia, she sent us an email and then we sent uh, you know, some uh, 50 copies to Australia. So, you know, this is kind of part of the ways. But not many people know, you know, this kind of uh, comic book, you know, photo novel available. So I think we need to be really working hard to, to disseminating uh, there is uh, some kind of cultural integrated material, so we, we, we will try. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I and I think have you ever tried actually disseminating at the nail salons um, for the you know either Chinese or Vietnamese? Vietnamese, I guess. Well, once we completed our project R25, uh, we 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 didn't try. So, but uh, we have some kind of Vietnamese hair fair in the community every year is going to be the really big health event. Uh, about 600 Vietnamese comes uh, to one day uh, Vietnamese health fair. So we brought the, uh, we brought these materials over there and then they pick it up and then we try. But those who you know work in the nail salon, they usually come to health fair and then they pick up the you know materials. So we may try. Uh, maybe how many people expose this photo novel in our communities? But so far, we don't do that. So, churches uh, for the Korean people, about 85% of Korean people they go to churches. So we distribute this one in the Korean churches. So maybe you know, maybe next step we may ask one question: Have we ever seen or have we ever read the photo novel? So we will see how much you know dissemination is in our community. And a follow-up question to that that just came in is how much uh, how much does it cost for a uh, make this DIY forum? in Vietnamese? You mean how much does it cost to, to make? Yes, so I think she's referring to the photo novel. Oh, so we got funded from the. Uh, uh, from the NCI, so this is all the volunteer work, you know, focus group and the actors and actresses and uh, taking the pictures. We just uh, have some fund to publish, to make this for to make this booklet, and the other, you know, taking pictures and that's all the you know volunteer work. So I think we got about each photo number cost about ten dollar, less than ten dollar. So it's not that, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not that. And if people are interested in ordering these, you, we can just contact yeah. you. They should. We so I can send uh, maybe ten free copies whoever has interested in. But if we they order more than fifty copies, it kind of we can charge some kind of shipping and uh, hand. You know, that's that's the one. So, but okay. if you so. You can send my, you know, email address, and then whoever is interested in, send me email, and then I will ask my secretary to send whoever is interested in. Or they can go to uh, our web page. They can see, you know, Chinese and Korean Vietnamese. But having this, you know, I have here this book. This book. This is much easier to read, and then you can put in the pocket, and then they can, you know, website is a little bit harder. So this is much easier. So. Send me okay. email. I can send you know at least less than ten copies for free. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and Dr. Uh, Chen and Julie, we did have a, a question that just came in. Um, I think this is for you. The question is: Many people don't know the demographic differences between at-risk populations for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Do you find the public health campaigns that target hepatitis C exacerbate the difficulties in discussing hepatitis B? Good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, as you know, uh, these are very distinct diseases, A, B, and C. And so, um, you know, they're just, uh, uh, the only commonality is the fact that they're virally transmitted. And, and I, I think the fact that uh, there's so much interest in C now because it's an easily definable at-risk group of of a, of a birth cohort, it makes it much easier to to uh, identify who's at risk. But um, people who are at risk for both B and C are uh, at risk for um, liver cancer. Do we want to? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed that when we go out to do community events is that people really get confused with Hep B and TB. Um, so when I go out there, mm -hmm. they're telling me, "Oh, we've got the skin test already, and we have to educate them and tell them it's a really different thing." So. Um, what I found in the community is just like there are still some um, some misconceptions about what TB is and happy. Um, so we really have to do a lot more education and more focused um, campaigns for happy. 
and, and as you know, that the reason is because um, B is not translated into any Asian language. There's always a B, the, the, the B, right? Do right? right? So that T B and 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 uh, Hep B are all the B and and when especially when people say, well, you know, it's a test that you uh, that you you know that your blood is taken here. Well, that's the same site for T B. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting to see how hepatitis, the virus itself, is translated in different languages. I know in Thai, it's it's literally. Uh, a disease that, uh, an infection of the liver, I guess, or inflammation of the liver. I um, mean, I guess that's one way to describe it. And I, I was actually wondering if you've run across as a liver cancer researcher, um, everyone knows, I guess, most of the Asian American communities know, knows about liver cancer, but if, do they necessarily attribute to hepatitis B or what is it normally you know, attributed to? Well, um, what's you the know, cause of, I guess, liver cancer? Yeah, I, I think that's still not too well known. About two thirds of the people have never been tested for hepatitis B, and because it is a disease that with no symptoms, um, there's just a w awareness, but not necessarily, um, you know, the reaction. Uh, Julie, you want to say anything about that? Um, yeah, no, no, no. Like, I definitely agree. So when I when we talk about liver cancer, not a lot of the community members associate that with Hep B. Um, and in Vietnamese too, um, liver, I think hepatitis B is often like inflammation of the liver. Um, and they think liver cancer, they're, they're normally telling me like, oh, I don't drink. So there's a really big right. um, education issue where they think it's associated with just drinking. And um, mm -hmm. I have not seen a lot of people make the connection um, between hep B and liver cancer without um, like us doing an education session with them or bringing the awareness to the community. Right. Okay, well, thank I think you. There, are, there is really a low awareness of this hepatitis B. We kind of did some kind of survey, and then we asked uh, about, you know, whether they have hepatitis B screening test, and they kind of really confused, and they said, I do hepatitis B screening every year. So they really confused with hepatitis B screening and liver function test. So we need to clarify, you know, no, you're Hepatitis screen is once in your lifetime. Have you ever done? And they keep kind of confuse the liver function test as well as you know screening test. So once we do some kind of education, they realize yeah this they never done that. Somebody done that, then they don't know uh, whether they got the, you know what are the their result infected or you know unprotected and protected. So that's the really you know we need to kind of educate you know community. Do this one once in your lifetime, and then know the know your status. If you infected, treated, and then unprotected, get you know vaccination. So this is kind of important message to prevent you know liver cancer. Absolutely. Um, so I think we have time for one more question, and one that uh, we do have one more, and this is for Julie. In follow up on the TB um, confusion. This is the first time that uh, this person has heard of the Hep B and TB getting mixed up. Um, are the rates of TB particularly high in the Sacramento Davis area? Um, I don't think the rates are particularly high, but it's more like that's something that they're familiar with. Um, so a lot of people go in for an annual TB test when they do volunteer or work. So they are already familiar with like TB testing, and that's why they get the mix up between like Hep B and TB. So it's right. not like they have a higher rate than the rest of the nation or anything. It's just um, the confusion with like the, the test on the hand and stuff. And there's also a lot right. of confusion about people not knowing their vaccination status. So um, even when I go to the community events and I um, we test them to see if they've been vaccinated before, a lot of people say they have, and then the test shows that they have never been vaccinated and uh, like vice versa. So there's a lot of confusion about what the shots are and the three shots. And I've had a lot of community members say like they've been vaccinated, they've been vaccinated, but they've never been vaccinated. Thank you. So um, I think the takeaway message is that there just needs to be continued education, especially in our communities. And it's just so much more complicated with uh, different cultural nuances and different language barriers and cultural, bar you know, and cultural barriers as well. Um, so I wanted to just um, go to our last slide here um, and let folks know how you can um, reach us. If you, if you have any follow-up questions or want to get connected with any of the speakers today, 
um, we're happy to do that. If you're interested in ordering a copy of the, any of the photo novels, um, just send us an email at connect at happyunited.org or any follow-up questions, we're happy to take them after this um, and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and we're also um, on, on various social media outlets, so feel free to join us. Um, we, ha we do have a lot of educational materials to, uh, to share with you and any um, materials that come up today, you know, we'll also share them with you on our social media. Um, lastly, I just want to thank you um, so much for joining. Thank you, um, Moon and Houston and Julie. Um, thanks so much for your time today and for your um, for the rich discussion. Um, and uh, we'll hope to have you back on, on one of the Hangouts again. Um, and to everyone else, um, thank you and have a great rest of the day. Uh, look for a message after uh, you disconnect and please fill out a survey about your experience for the Hangout today. We again apologize for the technical dif difficulties um, and we appreciate um, your time. Thanks everyone. See you, you later. Bye. 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 Oh, that was terrific.